next topic is a bit bizarre. <laughs> it does not follow the logic. Sometimes we forget that we are the creators rather than the creative. A lot of things, if you live as a created something, you are <coughs> fairly passive, subject to everything that's going on around you. And you, you sort of accept that you're in a resigned sort of way. It's okay. Take me, take me forward, come if you come. <laughs> wherever you want me to go. And it's even more subtle, you know. Since I haven't been particularly good and don't have a particularly good opinion of myself, then I deserve to suffer. So come on, suffering, come to me. I'll give you a home. Make me sad. <laughs> And we use people and things to extract the sorrow that we need to experience. <laughs> well, we need to because we've, we're not working it out any other way. We not need to, we're forced to, obliged to. And so, often there's a question, uh, how much in control are we really? Is there such a thing as free will? It was very interesting today, the Bible says drama, as soon as something happened, as soon as something has passed, it's drama. And of course it is, it's written. It. From an absolute point of view, there's no free will from Baba's point of view. But from our relative sort of standpoint, there's lots of possibilities. <coughs> and once we've gone ahead of a particular path, and that becomes very sort of, it influences the rest, in a sense. I remember mean, uh, um, whatever situation that we're in, karmically, which is basically my health, my finances, my relationships, the type of job that I have and where I am. That's my karmic, let's say, surrounding. How, how I get through that and how I move through that is very, very much dependent on the way I understand who I am and what I'm, what I'm about. And we do influence things. But we have to take <clears throat> the reins, as Baba said. We have to, you know, I am the creator. I'm the creator of my time and the situations that come up, you know. <clears throat> Maybe you've seen this before, but it makes it quite easy because you've got people believing that you know they're stuck in this sort of prison of time and space 
So this is time. And this is space. Yeah. And we we know that there's another these these are not particularly good. Can you see that? Okay. So here we are, you know, and we know that there's another dimension too, which is our thinking, our consciousness. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. That's where you've got the, f the five dimensions. You've got three of space, one of time, and this one of consciousness. And we move around here, in here somehow, right? And that becomes. I was born here. I'm going to maybe at some point in the future when I'm going to pop off. Um, move on to the next. But to all intents and purposes, where we are and who we're with occupies so much of our conscious energy. You know, the culture and the pickups. You know. Um, so we, we very effectively make a prison out of this, yeah, and it be green, let's see how green goes. And here we are inside this prison sort of holding on to the bars, not very particularly happy, sort of, you know, <laughs> here we are, sort of living inside here, maybe at some point we become a BK, you know. <laughs> Get a badge. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> and maybe we change the pictures on the wall, we put a shoot bubba here. <laughs> maybe we throw out all of our the bhakti books and we start to fill them up with Merley notebooks. <laughs> But to all intents and purposes, the only thing we've done here, we put a BK in front of everything. What? Oh, yeah. Black. <laughs> okay. I remember once I was with a group of um, fathers in Madhubat. And one of them asked me, you know, I've been meditating 11 years, until now I haven't experienced the golden red light of Paranda. And I said, well, I haven't either. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a visual person, in a sense, it's not something I feel in. I feel the light, I don't see golden red. Some people do. Most people don't. But you know, it's very different. And here we have to go with what, you know, there's a brilliant expression by Devahad uh, de Chardin, that we are spiritual beings passing through a human experience rather than human beings going through a spiritual one. So, this has been here before, you know. I am this soul here, you know. And that soul has very peculiar, very specific characteristics. And this has happened before, you know, these portable prisons that we sort of walk around in. We meet each other. Hi. How are you? Oh, you know, not too bad. We greet each other through the bars. And we try to, you know, not have this sense of being pressed in <coughs> by our circumstances, by our relationships, by this and by that, you know. Instead of changing our consciousness, which will change everything, we make the mistake of trying to adapt ourselves to the circumstances and not understanding that actually the way I am, or rather the way I am being, is giving life to whatever is forming around me. So the state of this, you know, and even if I'm with someone else, right, there's another. Let's first of all do this one. This is, these are 
You know, I've come a long way, you know. I'm this. I'm this thing. I am being temporarily this green fella here. Even BK green fella. So meditation is not just me sitting inside of this cell, <coughs> pressed in by all of the circumstances that are formed around me, and, you know, baba, 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 trying to sort of pray my way out, instead of just realizing that I am, I am this red thing. I'm not stuck. I'm only stuck if I really take this on. He said, the only difference between BK Greenfellow and, and Greenfellow himself, maybe, is yes. no badge. <laughs> <laughs> but if I lose this consciousness, there's no difference, really. This is the, the confluence age. This is the iron age, really. The iron cage. And <clears throat> what I said after talking to this, this group of fathers, um, it seems, I actually went to Daddy and said, Daddy, it seems like a lot of people, you talked about it in the, in the, in the session, it was a, one of those Adha retreats, you know, they have all sorts of different retreats. These were Father's retreat. It seems like a lot of us make effort to meditate. Uh, and uh, we simulate rather than experience. You know, like a flight simulator. You go in the motion, you go through the motions, and you can actually choose the airport and the flight simulator. You can take off, you can go through all the. Okay, turbulence. Okay, put the turbulence in. And you get shaken up as if it's really happening. But it's all. Simulation is not real. So if my experience is real internally, then I will definitely have uh, a chance to change the reality that sort of forms around me. Now, the way it works out, since I don't know how the future is going to be exactly, and this is where our relatively, relatively free will kicks in. But no idea of the, the panorama that, that comes up as the base of one decision, right? This is why the letter Y at least used to fascinate Pythagoras. <laughs> because you've got, you know, tree for me here, right? So at this particular moment, there are many possibilities. All of these things are possible. I can, you know, suddenly decide that I'm going to change my career or change my profession or change the center that I'm going to or go to another city or go to another country. All of the, the, those things are technically possible. But in fact, what happens, and this is why it used to fascinate, but to make a decision, this is the point of the decision, you have to be straight, erect, correct. And then you can say, well, I'm going this way, not this way. To do or not 
not to do, to be or not to be, to say or not to say, to go or not to go. This point of decision is very important because it can either weaken or strengthen the effect that we're having on the world that forms around us. Yeah? So let's say he decides to go this way. Yeah, well, at this very moment, all of this possibility is cancelled. Yeah? And then he goes this way, and then this way, and then this way, and then this way, and then this way. And then this way. So all of these are also cancelled. You know? Unless, wait a minute, I, I did the wrong mistake. I, I made the wrong decision here, so I have to go back again and go off somewhere else. And many times you lose a lot of space going backwards and forwards in yourself because the things in the world that we live in does not have any real existence outside of our own heads. The people, yes, where other people do exist, it's just that my version of, does, of them does not exist except in my own head. Things exist. Matter exists, but my experience of matter does not exist outside of my own head. So when I say there was a fantastic, you know, I remember once I, one, one of uh, my work colleagues asked me for a suggestion about where to go for a holiday. And so I said, go to India, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> It's a fantastic place. I can give you all of the places. I've been there many times. You, I can give you all of the hints. Once you arrive there, she actually was so excited to go in the end, and she took a friend with her. Did she arrive at the day that Rajiv Gandhi was assassinated? <laughs> <laughs> and they couldn't leave the hotel for five days. You know, and they saw all this ruckus in the streets, all of these riots and protests and the police and the, the, what, what happened to the peaceful Indians that, I, that Ken had to, told me so much about? And as soon as they freed people to be able to leave the, the hotel, what did she do? Went back to the airport. I'm out of here. So a few weeks later I said, oh, you're back. How was India? <laughs> she said, go and talk to him. Go and talk to him. <laughs> that experience exist? Of course there were things happening. But she could have made more out of it. I mean, sometimes the happiest person in the building is the elevator operator. You know, most people think, well, I only remember even one brother saying, how can I, you know, I'm having tr terrible trouble imagining myself as being luxury in the right. I'm a dishwasher. <laughs> change your dishwasher conscious and I'm washing dishes trying to imagine me being Lakshmi in the right doesn't it's not working. The thing is that how we look at ourselves will have tremendous impact on the sort of world. You know what sort of uh, message did I send do I send out to the world that forms around me? You know? I can be anywhere here, you know. In fact, I can start off ranching completely out and something else, you know, I can be up here. Why not? Or here. Why not? I can be anywhere. Why do I have to accept that the things that are formed around me are sort of a conspiracy to make me feel uh, sad or down or unappreciated? No. If I send that sort of message out to the world, the world will say, okay, Fine. They'll give me a hundred reasons why. You try to change people, it's the same thing. Especially if you're counting the rosary of their defects. So-and-so is like this, so-and-so is like this. Think of your favorite complaint. <laughs> Think about it. I did this one because the, the PowerPoint projection, what the projector was broken. And it was a very specific presentation. I said, folks, everything's on that presentation. And 
do something else here. Uh, <coughs> what's your favorite complaint? I heard a good one the other day from my brownie. Why is it that everyone who's around me is stupid? <laughs> <laughs> What do you find this all saying frequently? Why they can't change. Why can't people change? What else? Lack of truth. Lack of truth. What about time? Anyone with time problem? Yeah, no time for anything. Anyone with traffic problems? No. Time, people, traffic. No one cooperates with me. Why do I have to? Re why do I have to do everything myself? You know. Why don't people cooperate? So all of these things. And so what we did, um, I got. We got about five or six complaints out of the audience. So about three hundred people. Is that okay? Everyone with a time complaint go to that corner. Everyone with a no one cooperates with me complaint goes to that corner. Everyone with traffic problems goes to that corner. Everyone is surrounded by stupid people go to this corner. <laughs> <laughs> and I want each of you, each of the groups has to make a song. Because <laughs> we're going to have a complaints choir. <laughs> Okay, group one, sing. Oh, we don't have any time to do anything anymore because of this and that. You know? <laughs> Why is it every time we're always surrounded by stupid people? <laughs> like that, each group sing their songs. Okay, group one, louder. Group two, louder. Group three, louder. Group four, five. Okay, everyone sing at the same time. Five different songs, different tunes, and as loud as possible. Of course, what? Because if things are colourful and exaggerated, they, they don't forget. Actually. Anyway, they were in the height of their cacophony. You know? I said to them, hey folks, you know what? You look pretty ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and they say, yeah, we do. Because the problem isn't that, is it? The problem isn't what you're saying. The problem of lack of time, is that the problem? Is the problem lack of cooperation? What's the problem there really? No one cooperates with me, is that the problem? What is the problem? You yourself. Yeah. No one understands me. What's the problem there? You probably don't understand yourself. If I don't know, how can I expect someone to do for me what I can't do for myself? You know, this sort of thing. So the first number one uh, prerogative, if I want to really change the things that form around me, is I have to start sending out different messages to the world in the way that I think, in the way that I talk to myself, the way that I can sometimes convince myself, and this is very subtle my I convince myself that I'm right and someone's wrong. And in fact, you know, uh, all I have to do is look at the results. What about the way you feel about ourselves? That's it. That's very powerful. 
if I feel not so great, then a not so great reality will build around me. Because constantly I'm interacting with it. With every single decision that I make, I'm sending out a message into the future. I'm messing around with a field of possibilities. And I'm calling to myself a future event. You know, obstacles form. Why? Where does an obstacle come from? Is it out there? It is out there too, but... I am invoking a situation which is connected with a particular sanskar that I have in myself. And unless I change that particular sanskar, that obstacle will continue. Um, I have to learn to to carry things differently, perhaps. Yeah. So, <clears throat> if I, um, it's more like, more or less like this. When Baba said last year, I think one of the most uh, important lessons from last year was about time and thought, right? You have to use your time better. Even today, Baba says, don't waste your time. Now, I have to understand time, in a sense. So I have to divide what, what is the future, what is the present, what is the past. Now, the past could still be there in the form of, you know, packets of experiences that have, haven't been sorted out. When Daddy Janky um, celebrated her 90th birthday, um, there was a party, and she didn't really want it, but in Oxford, did you go to that time? No. Um, there were about a hundred people, and she wanted, of course, to be a service occasion rather than just a celebration. So there was a dialogue on called um, <coughs> Serving from the Heart. I always remember this. Uh, and what it was is that she was there and there was a moderator, it was Tex Gunning who was a moderator. He was a, at that time he was the president of the Unilever. Uh, in the Asia Pacific. And he was uh, setting up some questions, and they were each of the tables, they were sitting on tables, and they were, so it was all very well divided to the different groups of people. And then we would have a talk and bring up some questions for Daddy, right? So one of the people on our table asked the question, it's all very good. Very, very nice, but how do you serve someone from the heart who's betrayed you? How is it possible? You know? And Daddy, Daddy said, well, wait a minute. The only one that can betray you is yourself. yourself. No one told you to, to depend on that person for anything. And when it got back to talking on our table, one the person said, it was like we were betting on a horse. Your horse didn't win, so what do you do with a, with a betting ticket? Just rip it up, there's another race on. So no one tells us to carry things from the past except ourselves. No one convinces us not to learn from the things that we have to learn from accept ourselves. And if we really want to make the past light, we have to learn from it. Because lessons learned don't weigh anything. They actually use the opposite, help us fly. So everything that's holding me back is something that I haven't learned from yet. And I'm condemned to repeat it 
unto a moment. So I have to use my perception to look at the past differently so that in no way it holds me back. I, I can move forward, but unless I do, I'm carrying stuff, someone did something, someone said something, someone, even things that were not even aware of me, from other births, that I can only sort out in yoga anyway. But I have to, I have to learn from that to move forward. In the present, this is for me the real meaning of Trithaldashi in terms of effort. Uh, Baba Spitz said the word Trithaldashi today. But in the present, what do I do? I have to redefine myself. Who am I really? What do I have to offer? What is there? You know, what do I have? If I'm completely free and I don't have any um, fear, and Baba is with me now, where do I go? What can I do? What's in front of me? You know, and I start to produce a very, very positive self-image that in my self-conversation. In my soul conversation, it's very, very positive and, and based on gyan. So that then I look at myself and I feel good, like we're just doing before the break. I am that. Nothing's going to take that away from me. This is my value. I'm going to state my value in this world. I'm going to keep to that value. That sends out messages to the future. I say, hey future, there's, there's something happening, this person's changing. And so, good things start to move towards us. We, we, we invoke it. So is, is the world that forms around me an invocation of something great? Or is it just the consequence of a, an un understood past? To do that, we have to learn to be detached. And um, detachment has a few sequences, and we're going to do a few sequences here. Is that okay? Yes. <coughs> the first, the most easiest type of detachment, perhaps, is to be detached from the body. The second, more difficult, is to be detached from our roles. Roles. You're not attached to your children. You're attached to the role of the parent. You're not attached to your job. You're attached to your professional role or whatever it is. That's how it is. If you're attached to um, a place, you're attached to the sense of comfort that that gives you. So actually you're attached to your body or to your role. The third type of detachment, even more subtle and more difficult, is to be detached from your own story. And the fourth and most difficult is to be detached from the fruit of what you're doing. Detached from the fruit of what you're doing, you know. So you do things as Baba says, up in and up, yeah, as you say, karmically, you know. I'm an instrument, I'm not attached to what's going to happen from this. If something great happens, it's, it's Baba's wonder, you know, to be detached from what you do. So it's not easy to get out of that prison. Even if you go through, you know, change your clothes, change your hair, you know, put a badge on, 
sit on the cup and put a, put a sort of meditation room in your cell. You know, change the decoration, paint the walls, sit on your little bit of carpet, but you're still in the cell. Yeah. And the cell is formed from those four types of attachment. You're attached to your body, you're attached to your role, you're attached to your story going forward. When I was this and when that happened, and, you know, when I was a kid, I, I used to like, you know, when, when I, you know, my mum used to make such great chopped chip cookies, right? You're attached to your story. I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that, and then I came into Gyan, and then I went to that center, and then I went to that center, and this and that. And yeah, I had difficulties with so and so. Who hasn't had difficulties with other Brahmins? Anyone here? <laughs> yeah? I remember I was with 400 Brahminas and is the person that you've most suffering suffered from in your life sitting here in the room? You know? <laughs> <laughs> said that most of our karmic settlement will happen with other Brahmins. Isn't that great? Because <laughs> <laughs> we've been intertwining the whole of our, it, whatever, 84 births. In the last 63, intertwining in ways that were not particularly healthy. In any case, I need to have, because this afternoon we'll talk about meditation, and the pre-meditation bit is detachment. The ability to become detached. That has an immediate effect on the reality that's around me. You know? If I start to define myself as free, you know, the reality is always free. If I start, I continue to define myself as a complainer about my own reality, you know, I don't have any time. <laughs> no, but everyone's stupid, you know, and no one cooperates with me, come on. Come on, reality, do something differently. No, no. Think differently. Think differently. The things will never change around us unless we think differently. Not just think differently, see the things differently. I'm going to talk a bit about this more tomorrow. We have to redefine everything. Rename things. You know, Baba says your worst enemy is your greatest teacher. Looks nice on paper. <laughs> what, what's the experience of it though? His worst enemy is my greatest teacher, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Great teacher. <laughs> There's an aha going on here. <laughs> well, it is true because when I'm with BKs, I always feel that I learn things about myself, where I am at and what I can do about it. Yeah, that's often, I mean, all of us are very wise in retrospect. The thing is, we have to be wise before it happens. Well, you can experience by experience of things, that's how I know. The thing is, if we start to send out different messages to the world around us, the world will start to organize itself differently. The same world, the same people. It's much cheaper to change an attitude than to change a job or to change a center, or to change a relationship. It's much less, and it's probably more guaranteeing also, 
guarantees uh, a different future. So, who could say that the future is not going to be pretty much more of the same? Am I stuck in a rut where I've got everything sort of labelled nicely and there I am running around my own little rut and facing the same things month after month, year after year? I got through uh, a lot of stuff in the beginning, but now, you know, here it is. You know. <laughs> same old story. Have I been through this scene before? Has, has this sort of thing happened to me before? Has, that sort of, this, has this sort of thing upset me before? You know, if I start to see that the same sorts of things upset me, and the same sorts of behaviours make me worried, and the same sorts of apprehensions take away my stage, then probably I need to change the way I talk to myself. Yeah? So if you want to have success in meditation, Baba says the method has to be correct. But even perhaps more important, I'm talking about formal seated meditation last night, we, we made a bit of a a game of it, you know, if you meditate, you're 12 years in Gyan and you meditate two, two hours a day, you actually meditate for a whole year. One twelfth of 12 years is a whole year. And does our stage, is our stage proportional to that sort of dedicated time? Maybe not. So if I want to make the most out of the the special time that actually I have arranged things to not to be doing anything. I'm sitting there meditating. And I spend the first bit sort of uh, fighting against uh, attachments, those four types. You know, the body. Uh, <laughs> or the role and this ramifications or the story that in the recent past has gone on, what hasn't gone on, or, you know, the, the expectation about some result that you know, if I do this and that, this happens and that will happen and that will happen, that's attachment. You want to check your attachment, just see how you're affected by things. So I need to do the pre-meditation bit, which is living and understanding things in a more detached manner. Now, <clears throat> let's go through it. Yeah. Even detached from sleepiness, sleepiness is being attached to your own body. Right? the senses to deaden the soul. And I think the soul should enliven the senses rather, right? It should, that's how it should be. <coughs> Some people have got into such a, a, a routine with their meditation, they sit in the same place in Amrit Vela, and about five minutes past the hour, exactly the same five <laughs> minutes past the hour, the, the head goes to the left shoulder. <laughs> you know? So even our physical body has fell into the pattern. You know? I, what is it? It's 12.30, so 11.30 at night I'm here sitting, talking to you. <laughs> That's what it is for me, and I don't feel particularly tired. And I know that the, the strength of the soul <coughs> is much greater than the strength of sleepiness. So, let's go for a, an experience of being completely detached from the body. Now, you can take the experience of detachment to such a state of relaxation that you get